Hello, I'm Alan Nasse with the second part of this two-part tutorial on the scalp trace files. In the second video, we're going to look at a few clinical cases I've done within the past couple weeks uh, that highlight the use and indications for the uh, scalp trace files. The scalp trace files constitute five individual files. The first three are sizes 10 tips with 02, 04, and 06 tapers, and the last two are sizes 15 and 20 tips with 02 tapers. You can tell the individual sizes by the two collar bands that are on the handle. The first one that's closest to the stopper indicates the tip diameter, and the one further up is the taper. A red band indicates an 04 taper, and a blue band indicates a 06 taper. The first case that I'm uh, going to show you is a premolar tooth number 13, maxillary left first premolar, which shows on the radiograph uh, to have a uh, somewhat of a uh, apical uh, curvature and some calcification. These cases are pretty common and usually what you need to do is you need to prepare the diameter to a specific size first before you can safely negotiate rotary instruments down to the apex. So clinically what we would end up doing is we always check the diameter according to our protocol with a uh, hand file and here you can see that I'm using a size 8 stiff file to just check and make sure that I have some kind of a uh, patency. I don't have to go all the way down to the apex uh, with it and I'm not necessarily screwing down the file. I'm just trying to make an indication as to how deep this file is going and record that, uh, record that length. After I use the uh, 08 file then I'm using a, a bioarray size 0 which is a 25 tip with an 08 taper in each canal to simply give me a little bit of coronal shaping at the beginning and once I have some coronal taper I end up using my scout race files. Now I can use the scout race files in a crown down fashion with a reverse taper. As opposed to the traditional 02, 04, and 06 taper, I'm using here a reverse 06, 04, and 02 taper. And what that does is because the 06, uh, 10 file is a little bit sturdier, it prevents uh, early unwinding of the file. I'm operating these at 900 RPM, and I'm taking the 06, 10 to a pre-estimated length or to wherever I feel some resistance. After I use the 10, 06, I'm using the 10, 04 file, Again, with the same principle, 900 RPM, two resistance. After using the 1006 and 1004, I'm now putting a little bit of EDTA in the chamber and I'm moving to the size 1002 file. After taking my 1002 to length, I measure the working length. Once I have determined the working length, I take my size 1502 uh, scout race file up to that length in each canal, followed by a size 20. The 15 and 20 are used at about 600 RPM. Once a size 20 has reached my working length, then I use my bioarrays zero for some further coronal shaping. And once that is done, now I'm using the ultrasonic to remove all debris and place some fresh sodium hypochlorite in the canal. And now I'm ready to instrument using my regular instrumentation system. In this case, I use the endosequence through a cycle of 40 through 20 and uh, until my desired length is reached. And here's the final radiograph showing obturation using the endosequence uh, system and the bioceramic uh, one comb obturation system. As you can see, the scout trace files did help us reach the apex and follow the curvature gently and safely. The entire case was performed in about 15 minutes with the obturation. The following case showcases the use of the scout race files in relatively easy cases in order to replace hand instrumentation. Following access preparation, removal of the pulp, and also removal of the dentinal triangle to get straight line access, some ultrasonics are used to remove debris, and a size 8 hand file is used to confirm patency and get an estimated working length. The BioRace Zero is used then followed by bioarrays 1 for some coronal and midroot enlargement. We then move on to the scout race files in their traditional sequence of size 1002 followed by 1004 